Yo. Hey. Can you hear me? You listening to Hashtag WAW. What a week. Yeah, yo. What a week. Week. Eta, unlike a government spokesperson in a recent press conference, we can tell you for sure our guests have been invited, they did show up, and that we are going to be speaking to them. So welcome back to Wow, What a Week. This is... Wow! What, what, what a week. What a week. You can't make this shit up. Shit up. And our comedian guest is in the building. He's a comedian that can make quite an entrance, and even a re-entrance. We can call him Mr. Shuttle. I mean, so much so that he was actually nominated twice for a newcomer award at the same awards show two years in a row. That's how hot he is. He, like, he comes twice. And now, <laughs> after a sort of retirement, he's re-entering the world of comedy. Please give a wow welcome to Mr. Mashlangu, a.k.a. Tol Asmo. Ow, 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 ow. Monkey, see. <laughs> Mr. Mobontuan. Yeah, well, that's correct. How are you doing, my dog? I'm pleased to monge is a solo mozi. Solo mozi. Masha go kote no mrunga on zonza. Ntamo kushe pu futi pez gwa bongo bondo an. On kumbe ni. On ma diba. Togo waza. And then what's your African surname? Okay, my African name is Kurs. <laughs> is that why you're wearing Kurs as a top? You know, it's Lozi. It's Lozi. It's Lozi. It's Lozi. It's Lozi. Um, so, uh, um. I, I really t just took that whole thing because you know my my great grand my great great grandfather yes, sir. of course was a very staunch African speaking person and at the same time now my own brother in love with his tradition my own niggas was kwam sure you know sure. he was a nyanga and um, yeah obviously I'm the reincarnation of him sure Togos in in, in fact um, I, I can't disrespect you uh, Togos a gogo Togos a nyabo a kulba you went on a journey bro. You went on a journey. I remember we. I was in touch with you in the middle mm. of your spiritual journey. Yes. How much did that journey take out of you? Yeah. Just at a physical level, mm. at a mental level, mm. at a spiritual level. Do you know what it took? First and foremost, the keeping Gani. Yeah. Inkani means pride. It humbles you. It humbles you to such an extent whereby uzuhamba ngamadol. I remember meeting you with your Kobela. Yes. And you were, that was as humble as I've ever seen you. Thank you. That was as humble as I've ever seen you. Because you're buying Yes. You know, once you're underneath your Kobela's care, Yes. And when you're a child in someone's home, you need to be that. Exactly. There's no such thing as I'm tallest more and I've invited Utato to come to. There's no time for big no. energy when no. you're at that stage <laughs> of your life. Yeah. Hey, chop it off. <laughs> <laughs> they chop it up literally. <laughs> so, so yeah. So you're telling us about what it took out of you. You know, it 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 took away my comfortability. Yeah, I was extremely comfortable with where I was in mm -hmm. life. Mm -hmm. You know, what I mean, I mean, I had everything going for me. Yeah. You know, um, I had uh, multiple television shows. I was on each and every single magazine, newspaper you could think of. I was on a whole lot of blogs, my PR, I didn't even have a PR agent. PR would come to me, sure. you know? Sure. And um, I was on top of the world, Fresh, like honestly speaking, when where I was, where I was, and then when that whole mental dimension hit me, yeah. um, when the calling hits you, it hits people differently. Mm -hmm. from so, how did, so, so how did it hit you? Me, I went crazy. Yeah. The, the, the spirit of my Zlozi overtook who I was. Sure. And then I started going ballistic. And I started seeing everybody for who they really were. Ah. And because of that, yo, man, I told a lot of people shit in this game, yo. Yeah. A lot of people. I went and I told them exactly mm. what they're about, what they think of me. And I know. Like, mm. Sure. You know? And... Um, I'm I'm not ashamed of that, and mm. I, I can't take those words back because begui kini so. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. You 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 are talking your truth. Yeah. Telling your truth. That's correct. Mm. And not to start beef or to cause beef with anybody, but then people who I thought were my friends turned out actually uh, to be people who are in competition with me. Like I'm like I don't understand how we in competition, but we're doing this thing. I together. thought we're trying to bake the same cake. Yes, can't do. I know you're eyeing a bigger piece. Correct. Yeah, you know what I'm yeah. saying. And I, I felt like 
that's that's something I'm not gonna do anymore. I was sure. I was too naive. I was I was I was vulnerable. I was too trusting. Mm -hmm. I was too you know I was too much of myself basically. I was myself in the game, in and out of the game. Never was I an actor. I've never played a character mm -hmm. to say that okay, I've got this reputation to live by. Sure. Oh, and I'm, I'm mm -hmm. or some shit like that. <laughs> <laughs> I was none of that shit. I was tall as more, I was mung as much on every single thing I was on in television, yes, ever since by me. Yeah. Yeah. I remember myself and Euphonic did a comedy show in Bramfontein probably about 13, 14 years ago. Yeah. Um, it was called Comedy in the House. Oh, yes. And um, it was a comedy show followed by a house music party. Yeah. And you were one of the comedians that we'd hired. Yes. You were then relatively unknown, but building. Correct, yes. It's been quite a journey, though. Yes. Because uh, what I realized with your career is once one door opened, a hundred opened. True. Were you ready for what happened in terms of the rapid success as soon as no. it happened? No. Do you know, you and, you still remember Tolly B? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Tolly B um, and yourselves were, were the first DJs that actually said, you know what, we're going to incorporate comedy with house music. Yes. Um, Tolly, Tolly B's gig was a disaster. It was the first time I ever got booed in my life because mm -hmm. he was playing house yeah. and then stopped the music. Are you ready for comedy? <laughs> <laughs> Tallest small is coming now. Man, did I die on that stage. Why, why do you think you had such a bad show? I had such a bad show because people were not yet used to the synergy of stand-up comedy then. Yes, yes. Remember, w w the big five of stand-up comedy was uh, Trevor Noah, Kakis Ludica, uh, Lois Sokola, Eugene Koza, and Kiriboni Mulawudzi at oh, that yes, time. Yes, yes, And David Kibuka, obviously. Um, they are the ones that were doing more premium comedy. So they only did it at Blues Room at Village Walk. Uh, very high class, you know, kind of places where people understood what comedy was. Or at Blacks Only. For or at Blacks Only, yes. or at the, 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 the Johannesburg International Comedy Festival. Yeah. So now comedy being out in the clubs and stuff like that wasn't something people were used to. Sure. So now all of a sudden there's music and comedy. People are like, what the fuck is this? Like you just stopped my favorite song. Yeah, like for this shit. Like how do you stop <laughs> changes in my life and put on this kid I don't know? No, no, they were not feeling it at all. And I think that the build-up of stand-up comedy in South Africa, yeah. um, the, the, the right to passage was an extremely difficult one. Sure. Um, I remember when I got signed to Podium Comedy Merchants and I was in the same agency with Trevor and Eugene and Gahizo, the guys that I'd been watching on Pure Monati Rock the Rock. Yes. When I was signed under that agency with them through Takunda Bima, I couldn't believe it. Our offices were actually just here, just down the road. Yeah. I was at a position whereby I was like, wow, I'm in the big time. I'm sure. working with these guys. I opened the mic for all of these guys. And yeah, um, my career just took off. A hundred doors, just, the doors just kept on opening door after door, door after door. Mm -hmm. And I took every opportunity with both hands and I made sure I made it happen. When does Mome come into the picture? Okay, Mome comes into the picture now when I'm tall as Mo already. Yeah. All right? I'm tall as Mo with a big reputation in the clubs. Sure. And I'm performing on Marvel, in Marvel on 7th Avenue. Yeah. And I see this beautiful, colorful woman walking down the street. And I'm like, what the hell is this? Yeah. Okay, I see her first chuck. Second time I see her, she's jogging. Yeah. But I don't recognize who to woo here. But I can see the colors because that tracksuit she's wearing is yeah. not any ordinary tracksuit. It's sure. like some pastel colors shit like you and i'm like i think it's the same chick again yeah that's when i had to stop and say hi gassi style sure. yeah. uh, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. and then i know actually i'm a number pbm pin Oh, yes, it was back in the BBM yeah, era. Yes, I shot a PBM pin from then on. It was back and forth texting. Man, I fell in love with that woman's head. What hook, line, and sinker. Yes. Yeah. And then uh, you guys fall pregnant. Oh, man, we got married first. Oh, you got married first. Yes, yes, yes. yes I yes, proposed yes. to her actually while we were shooting our reality show. It was called Mo Love. Why, why did you propose? Did you propose for the show or were you very in love? <laughs> was it content or were you in love? It was not content, big bro. Um, for me, I was in love and I never wanted to see myself without this woman. Yeah. I felt like, do you know what? Because that time, Joe Momo was being macked on by like serious people. Sure. Like soccer players and shit. Sure. Like, you know I what I'm saying? I thought you said serious people. 
<laughs> you people had money, bro. These guys had more money than I did. I was just driving a little Mini Cooper then, doing club gigs above 500 times or whatever. But you're driving a Cressida now, so like... You know, eh? no, exactly. you know. OG. Yeah, I'm an OG, man, you know. So I think that um, what really made me fall in love with her was her, ex her ability to express herself through color. Show. Sure. Yeah. Now, a lot of people watching your show mm -hmm. often commented about how it seems like She's running not just the household, but you. Yes. Do you know more in Yeah. There's certain, there's certain tasks that you would delegate to your woman. Sure. Or delegate to whoever you feel is close in your life, whether it be your mother. Someone or you trust. Father, someone you trust. Yes. I couldn't be my agent and be the, the talent at the same time. I couldn't manage myself. Okay, yeah. yes, I was being managed by Takunda at that time. Sure. And... um. And those were the two people that were really managing my career and really putting me on the map. Mm. But at the same time, I felt like I needed to go in my own direction. For sure. I felt like I was going to be, I was constantly underneath the shadow of Trevor and Loiso. And, you know, I was always the opening guy. And Yeah, you were always the, oh, we also have another guy. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Like, oh, before he comes, yeah. let this nigga warm you up and then yeah. we'll yeah. bring him on. So what happened was that I, I built so much stage experience that, it, I was no longer an opening act. I was doing a complete full set. Yeah. And by the time the next act comes on, the, the audience is like, um... Well, we've laughed, to, we've uh, laughed enough. Do <laughs> you want to bring that guy back? Because, <laughs> uh, I mean, really, say, I mean, you're going to yeah. tell us about politics now. Yeah. And we just heard about VJ exactly. and his crazy, what, what, crazy cousins and shit like that. We relate more to those kind of stories. Yes. So then I thought, like, let me hand the responsibility over to Moment. Mm. I taught her how to manage me. True. I taught her the comedy game. I showed her who is who, who owes me money, who does this, who does that. And then she took it naturally and started running with the whole vibe. Mm. And trust you me, my reputation and the respect that people had for me became a little bit more, they took me more seriously because I'm yeah. running my shit professionally. Mm. It's, yeah. it's not you now, you're answering the phone. Yes. Uh, saying, tell us more, hello. Speak to the and then you take the phone and you put it in the other ear. So like more management. So well, I used to do that, bro. I used to do that. You're so stupid, bro. Oh my god, what the fuck? I used to do that because I used to answer my because I'm a call. I used to be a call center agent, right? Yeah. So how I'd answer my phone back in the day would be, "Thank you for calling to ask for how can I be of your assistance?" Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And everybody would be like, "Fuck, why do you answer the phone like that?" I mean. Yeah. But that's how I was taught to answer business line. <laughs> And if you'd like to book me, press one. If you'd like to book me, <laughs> press one. If you'd like to send some uh, comments, press two, you know? So then I, I stopped doing that shit, and then I uh, taught Mom exactly how it's done. Sure. And she kind of then created it into her own thing, where mm. she was able to now not just do comedy deals, but to do sure. television production deals as well. Mm. And our, our brand just, just started growing from strength to strength. Sure. Yeah. Do you feel... In retrospect, or did you ever feel at any stage mm. like maybe you handed over too much power? Yes, yeah. definitely. Now, that's how I feel. Um, you know, sometimes it's difficult to work with the one you love because when they make mistakes, you can't separate between business and mm. you, you, the relationship. You, you're walking on eggshells. Yeah, not eggshells is a light statement. Landmines, bro. Jeez, okay. Fucking landmines, okay? <laughs> You could take the wrong step and your leg is gone, bro. Okay? Proximity minds to those who play Call of Duty. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So now I'm, I'm, I'm in a field of proximity minds and, and yo, like, I can't tell her that, yo, you're fucking up here. Tell this person that we need this now or we need this at this specific time. Or she would be then more, how can I say, corporate sensitive. You know, now I'm just being guarded. You can't say this, Mo. Don't know. <laughs> this, you, this you can't do. This. Then I felt like, you know what? There's no, I'm like, I, I needed to space out. I'm like, baby, I need you to be my wife again. Yeah. You know what I'm Get saying? my wife come home. Yeah. Not my manager. Not my manager. Dude, you know how it is? I just fucked up Dude. a deal at night when I was sleeping in bed. She's facing that way. I'm facing the other way because of a contract. Ah, why am I here in the talk? No, I'm horny now, bro. Fuck that contract. Let me leave us. Did, did you ever get managed during sex? <laughs> like, Mongezi, <laughs> you can't go that deep. <laughs> yes, baby. 
Yes, baby, SBC and Safun we seven zel. I even want to write no man. Yeah. Baby, no man. <laughs> I'm going to do to you what they did to our city. <laughs> Es was ropping. Mal habe ich am Tag einen Ecke gerobt. Ja, ja. Mit Europa. Mit Europa. Na, das macht das. So, that's what it is, bro. That's what it is for real, John. Uh, so, oh, yeah. So, I bumped into you the other day uh, uh -huh. outside Amp Studios. Yeah. And we hadn't seen each other in a while. Yeah. In fact, we hadn't seen each other since the Lerato Mulo incident. Yes. But obviously, we'd been talking. Yeah, throughout the whole. And I, I appreciate your support. No, so much. get the fuck out of here, dude. Yeah. You're, you're my dude, dude. Right, you held me down. I, I, I got your back until. Even the legal advice you gave me. Sure. Everything that you instructed me to do and how not to fight back people that are talking bad of me. Sure. I think that that maturity really has assisted me a lot. Because sure. I was ready to reply back to every tweet. Because mm -hmm. I knew my innocence. I was sure. ready to reply back sure. to, any, to every tweet. So, as you were saying, when we bumped into each other. So, we bumped into each other. But you broke down and cried when we bumped into each other. Yeah. It was actually awkward because of like it's a, it's a, it's a public square. <laughs> and people are walking past. And you're crying on my shoulder. <laughs> And you don't cry quietly. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm here, it's so awkward to now. I'm like, oh, so, like, what do I do? <laughs> <laughs> I was so emotional that day I picked up because you invite, I, I remember I was supposed to be your first guest. You, you remember my first ever guest, yes. Yes, yeah. on the podcast. And I remember that same day, I don't know what was going on, why I was not available. Or I, was not I think you were in Cape Town or you were going to Cape Town or you were out of town. Yes, yes, I was out of town. Yeah. And then I asked that, yo, can I please, instead of me n not n not just being there, sure. can I suggest that you bring my brother, Eugene Causa? Yeah. I know for a fact that, you know what, he'll give you just the same of a killer first episode yeah. than th th as I would or, or, or even more. Exactly. You understand? Oh, oh yeah, for the record, um, Mo is one of the first, in fact, he's probably the first guy I told about this podcast yeah. before it even existed. Yeah. So like months before we even did this, we'd actually discuss we it. We're planning it, yes. We'd like, let's go ahead and do this thing. And, and you had my full support. So me not pulling up, and then we, we had a loss of communication yeah. for a bit of time. Mm. You don't know how worried I was. I was extremely, extremely... What, you thought I was upset? Yes. <laughs> yes, it says... Yo, I thought Big Dog is gap at me. Hey, then I'm seeing guest after guest, guest after guest. But no phone call. No phone call. I'm like, oh, uh, ha, ha. I'm like, no, wait, wait, wait a fucking second. And it's all my comedians that I've worked with and stuff like that. I'm like, no, hold on. Ah, that means I really affected you that day. Yeah. So when I met you, I couldn't hold myself back because better than this, who? You know, mm -hmm. that I'd let you down where you needed me the most. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And I and I had to apologize to you profusely because I felt like maybe our Anya Gusafun would need a show in Yako or Sokurma because we have so much shared experiences that I believe that, you know, and this platform would allow us to openly speak about such things without the director saying yeah. cut no sure. or being censored or whatever. Mm -hmm. So it was very important for me to have this sit down with you. Even today, in in like last night, last night I got a last minute booking to do a a production for two days yeah and i desperately need that job sure but i'd already committed to be with you mm. and i said to them that yo listen guys i already have a commitment in the morning true you're only gonna start doing my makeup not my leaven or whatever mm. so don't come and pick me up at seven bro yeah because they do that yeah you hurry up and then you wait yes you hurry up then you wait so i'm yeah. like no you guys i work on my terms now sure you understand so i'm like i'm going to newtown Tell your driver that he's going to drop me off at Newtown. Yeah. He will wait for me to do my interview with Fresh. And then when we are done, we'll come to your set. Absolutely. I don't need much makeup. I'm very sexy and clean. <laughs> As you, yes? <laughs> ah, I know. You're, 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 you're glowing. Yes, I'm glowing because I'm happy. Yeah. I'm extremely happy. And I'm happy that I finally made it onto your show. I'm so happy that I'm here. I'm so happy that I'm speaking to you. Mm. I, I, I'm, I'm happy that... You are asking me questions that are so deep and relevant towards my current situation right now. It's not just about the shows. Sure. It's also about the mongas, the human being, touch of the human being. Mm -hmm. And this 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 is something that's gonna enlighten a lot of people. Absolutely. Yeah. On the same day as fate would have it, yes. uh, you know, we ended up hanging out with uh, Eugene. Um, I think uh, Kenny McKenzie also joined yes. us in the basement. Yes. Tell us about your relationship with Eugene, because you guys are tight. 
Oh man. It's yeah, like Timon and Pumba. Oh man. Like, like Terrence, Pinky in the Brain. Terence Hill and Bud Spencer. <laughs> like Tatum <laughs> and <Tartan. laughs> So me and Eugene, whoa, we go many years back, 15, yeah. 16 years back. I remember the first time I ever co- performed in front of Eugene Koza was at the DSTV comedy circuit at Bambata in Centurion. Oh, uh, yes. And that night I brought Skumba along with me. I'm keeping a gas, I'm going to sit down and I'm going to go. That's his Sure. So I'm Because at that time, in Seven's at Centurion at the Discovery Health Call Center in Centurion. Yes. So I used to work call center during the day at night to comedy. So this is a very important show. DSTV Comedy Circuit is a big time paying show. We're all yeah. getting paychecks we never thought we could have sure. from talking shit, right? Sure. So I come with Skumba and I ask them, yo, Eugene Kriboni. I got this guy that I've been doing comedy with. I've been training him very in Timbisa for quite some time. Sure. And I think that he's ready to come and do a skit. You know what I'm saying? To do like, you know, just just whatever amount of time you can give him. He, he'll use it. Yes. Mm. So they gave me 10 minutes. So they said that, okay, fine. Now you're going to have seven minutes now. Because we're going to give this nigga three minutes of your time. Sure. To go ahead and perform. Skumba gets three minutes before me. Man, did he fucking kill it yeah i remember his first joke that he really used to i don't know what the fuck was going in his mind when he made that joke he spoke about what happens in his stomach when he eats food yeah so he spoke about a, a, a day when he went to carnivore restaurant you know carnivore yes, where they give yes. you so he said that they had sheep and cabbage and lion meat and some other zebra meat or whatever weird meats and crocodile meat in his yeah, stomach yeah. so it's like his digestive system was fighting because the lion was chasing the goat and the goat was trying to eat the cabbage <laughs> That's <laughs> right. So it's a whole story about what was happening in his digestive system. And there was three minutes flat and he fucking destroyed it. Yeah. I went on for my seven minutes. I got experience that time. I know what I'm doing. Yeah. I had done it and we kill it. So me and Skumba, these two boys from Tembisa, came to the DSTV comedy circuit and showed everybody flames. They, sh- they saw their mothers. They saw their mothers that night because yeah. the hunger was too much. Sure. We're guys, but yeah. my four room and it's cut less. Yes? Sure. Sharp. So then, um, after the show, Eugene calls and Kiribo and Mlaoji have a conversation with us outside. They're like, mm. no, listen here, guys. Why don't you guys pursue this thing full-time? Sure. What are you doing? Mm. I, and I tell them that, no, me, I'm a call center agent. And then Skumba's like, I know me, I'm administration at SAPS. Sure. You know, he's the guy who stamps affidavits. Ah, uh, yeah. he's a satisfier. He's a satisfier. Sure. <laughs> so he was, we were both proud of our jobs because that was our ink. Yes. You know? And Eugene was like, nah, quit that shit. Sure. Quit your jobs and let's do this thing full time. Guess what I did? The next day, I quit my job. The fuck off. Yeah. You know? I quit my call center job the yeah. following day. And I was a specialist at Discovery Health. Mm. And, and that means that I was dealing with irate clients, intricate claims. Sure. I was dealing with ex- gratia claims, claims that are not willing to be paid by the medical aid. I would fight for people to get their claims processed and paid. Uh. You know? So... Uh, I had a very, very important position at Discovery Health and I quit it mm. and I pursued my stand-up comedy and trust you me, I covered my salary in 14 days. Yeah. From that day going forth, Eugene and Kiriboni made sure that I they was get working. Yes. Skumba unfortunately at that time didn't want to quit his job because he was mm. looking at his um, pension and providence, whatever thing. Sure. So he kind of stayed at the police force and continued working. I think he only quit now recently, but my 2018 or 2019, just before mm. COVID or whatever, you know? And... That for him was something that he felt he had to do because he's not just doing a job, he's at service it's to service. the community. Yes. Yeah. It's a very selfless job to do, you know? So, yeah, Eugene and I then sparked it out from there. We became friends, I became his opening guy. Mm-hmm. So I was touring the country, touring Africa with Eugene Causa. Everywhere Eugene went, he took me along sure. with him. Sure. And I also was opening for Luis and Luis Ogola at the same time. Mm-hmm. Luis took me to Cape Town for the first time in my life. Oh, wow. Well, yeah. And I was culture shocked. I couldn't believe where the fuck I was. Mm-hmm. Eugene Kosa took me to PE, took me to Durban, took me to uh, Zimbabwe, took me to multiple countries that I've never experienced in my life. Mm-hmm. I went to that man. True. So our relationship as brothers really became super, True. super tight, even to this day. But your relationship with Kumba went the other way. Though. It went the other way. Do you know what? I went to Mabakula. Mm-hmm. You know fame is a monster. True. Fame is a freaking monster. And money is the devil. It can change you. Mm. Maybe you're not as born. Oh, so, so you're saying it changed him? Yeah. It's not changed. Nah. I'm still here fresh. So what would it take for you guys to, to, re- be to, 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 to reconcile? I think it needs a sit-down with a mediator. 
What you, because what do you mean? I'm mediator? hurt. He is hurt. You, but you were not. But you were not introduced by mediator. We're not introduced by mediators. He's the one who came up to me and asked me to do stand-up comedy. Sure. When he saw me doing my shit in Tembisa. Mm. I was being chased and stabbed by niggas after shows all the time. True. My car would have messages on it. Yeah, I need to be work ass. I'm not begging more diablo. You bale work ass. You need more to. You need to go to net. Yeah, I'm. Who ain't trying? I'm a team by name type. Yeah, I'm the polar net. When you're done, <laughs> I swear, bro. So Skumba started protecting me after shows and shit. <laughs> so, but are, are you willing to have a sit down with him? Yes, if, I if am. If I arrange it, are you willing to have it? I am willing to have a sit down with Skumba because I can do an M call it and I can do his sabai lagwean. Sure. So at the same time, straight talk never breaks. It always mentions mm. bonds, mm. and I think that he's been avoiding the conversation for quite some time. Mm. You know. I reached out to him, I spoke about him on the MacG podcast. Sure. Still nothing. Mm. You know what I'm saying? That issue of pride is the problem. You know, in Dr. Meli is Torbe. Sure. So, Masinga is Torbe, Stalapan is Kulu Majinga Machi Tazakaz. I'm sure he's speaking for standing up. Sure. And I'm, I know for a fact, if I were to do a two man show with Kumba, mm. would fucking sell out each and every single time. Yeah. Well but now the thing is, we're not in competition. Here's one thing you must know mm. you cannot beat the Grandmaster. You understand? Yeah. You can't. You can't. You can't. You can't beat uh, Silver Fox. No, yeah. it, man. It, I mean, Bruce Lee cannot beat it, it, man. Man. Yeah. You understand? Yeah. So I keep on telling him. He keeps on throwing punches. I'm like, nigga, relax. Yeah. Calm the fuck down. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I think that you know, yes, he's older than me, man, in yeah. terms of age. But then, in terms of what we're doing in the industry, ah, uh, seeing Dang. Sure. He, 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 you know what I'm saying? I'm that comedian that can change his life as I have done before, and I know he can change mine as he's done to mine. Sure, sure. So people like Skumba and Pop Pops, those are the people that I really think that we need to have that sit down again. What happened with you and Pop Pops? I am jealous of him, but Pops. Why, what, what's wrong? What's happening between you? You know, I felt like he was two-faced towards me mm. because he was friends with people that I felt fucked me over during my time when no one was there to help me. Nobody helped me. Mm. As a matter of fact, people stayed away from me like a rash. Sure, sure. Then all of a sudden, when I'm good again, how more you gonna come and perform at my one man show? I'm like, what? Mm. Now that you see me dancing with Jacob Zuma, you wanna come and ask me <laughs> to come and perform at your show because you believe I'm deemed relevant again? Yeah, but when I was going through a fire, you, you, never, you never picked up the phone to call me. He never picked up the phone to call me. Mm. He called me maybe once or twice, whatever, but then. Mm. You, you understand what I'm saying? When when what what I was doing for them, I gave him Pop Pops his first television show. Mm. When when Kenny McKenzie and Raplana Puma gave me my show on called Laugh Out Loud, that was the first prank show I did. I put my niggas on. About Ali, it was him, Rich Lou Benoit, Mo Jack Lee Huku, sure. Deep Fried Man, Sia B. All of those guys were my niggas, mm. and I said to them, "But yo, guys, we can't do this show without them." Sure. And they know that, Robbie Collins as well. Mm. They all know, which do not, I was the follow through and put you on guy. Mm. But I never got any of that back from them. Sure. And guess what? I was wrong to expect it back. Mm. That was my fault. And that's what I apologize Be for. Because that's always been my argument, that yeah. I expect nothing from everybody. True. It helps me manage my expectations. Yes. And it protects my peace. You, Be I, that was where I went wrong. Because when you... Because I put people on as part of my calling, yeah, I expect nothing back in return. True, but it'll be a lie to say it doesn't hurt. I am him as I When the very same people can't pick up the phone and say, "Are you okay? Yo, Do your man. kids have food. Yo, just really bad, man. Do you need work? Do you need work? Yes, those kind of calls are important. Because yeah. I'm too gasbali, I'm too gas. I'm to know more. Where does this come from? What what? He didn't understand where sure. it came from. I saw him so bad that I told him to go have a three-way with Kumba and Somizi. Hey, but no. You know what I'm saying? But why is Somizi catching straight bullets? I don't know. He catches straight bullets because at the same time, he also played me. Yeah. He was calling me, comforting me. Oh, who's over right, whatever. Oh, please don't go to the MacG show. Mm. Then all of a sudden, Vusinova is fucking on MacG. Mm. Then I'm like, why is your friend on it? Then you have the right to call me and tell me not to speak my truth on this nigga's show. Mm. You understand? And then... You know when someone at Tim is sure. then you are the one who's following behind them all the time asking for help. Like and say, yo, dog, remember what you said? Now follow up. Oh, he's yes, oh yes, this was an end. Oh yes, oh yes, he's showing me how much he's working instead of 
going back to what we spoke about in the initial conversation, because what should I mean? Sure. As I'm on phone, so means what what phone I mean? Is it? Do you need help? I will help you. N- not necessarily do I need help. He was calling to check up on what me and ninja and you. True. Because I love his mom mm. so much. Mm. True. But the thing is, that didn't help me with shit when I needed it the most. And I told him, I'm not more to talk. The thing is locking me down. I don't have a car. I don't have mobility. I'm being supported by my wife. You understand? Do you know how much that shit will bring you down as a man knowing what he at time yeah at time million gun more with the baby gun to me at time. Sure. Never mind the petrol, never mind the never mind the bond, mm. never mind the kids' school fees, groceries, all those things. Air the time. smallest, simplest mm. things. Mm. No one was there for me at that point in time. You were there. Mm. He, 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 even Namaj, I'm not at the best have my best financial capability. Mm. But I'm trying. You helped me out the other thing on a petrol. Mm. I asked you for 200 rand. You sent me a thousand rand. Mm. I'm not saying I've got a thousand rand. <laughs> Don't send you a message. It was the last one. I'm just saying. <laughs> Shit can get real. Yeah. And people don't understand that, yes, we are public figures, but this is all we have gunning for us. I sure. can't go back to Discovery Health and ask for my call center job back. Mm-hmm. Can you imagine me being at a call center now? I can. I'd call every day. <laughs> I would call every day. I'd create problems just so I can call. So maybe it's actually not a bad, uh, unique <laughs> selling point there. You never know. Uh, dear Discovery, yeah. my, my medical aid is with you guys. <laughs> my uh, uh, my policies are with you guys. My insurance is with you, is with you guys. <laughs> Here's an idea. For a funny call oh, center okay. agent, press three. <laughs> Think this one is more without a lie. <laughs> you know? And I take pride in that job so yeah. much because it really taught me how to corporatize myself so sure. much. Sure. You know, I even had the honor of meeting up with Adrian Gore yeah. and 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 creating the soft skills so manual. You know, who discovered it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yes. That's tough. Because we created a thing called the soft skills manual, how to speak to people like normal people on the call center. Oh, yes. yes Not yes. a claim number, but you are tired of I see you. I hear you. I see you. you. I hear you. True. Sure. Yes. Um, last uh, beef. Yes. While we were still hanging out the other day, yes, um, uh, one of the Goliath brothers came up to you and greeted you. Yes, but, but you, were, you were not interested. Who, Jason? Jason. Yes. Yeah. What's happening there? He's another one of the the guys that come out of my left testicle. Okay, but nah. Well, understand. And he honored and respected me when he opened up the Goliath Comedy Club. All the Goliath boys started doing stand up comedy because they saw me mm. do stand up. You can question them, all three of them, and sit them down here. When you come in the wires, they like, oh, Pedro. They'll tell you, we saw Tolles Mo rock the rock mm-hmm. in a way that they could relate with. And we had a fallout, just, it was him and his wife, we had a big fallout in between each other. And I felt like, you know what, um, they depreciated the value of stand-up comedy for me. You know? You but know? what was the fallout about, though? The, do you know what? It, the fallout was honestly, you know, I'm trying to even think what the fallout was about. It was over gaming. It was over some gaming thing that we were supposed to be doing. And all of a sudden, Jason is now considering himself to be a gamer. Um, he's getting all this gaming PR when he, he, they were supposed to give me that gaming PR because I already have a company within gaming. So now they were just doing this thing for the PR and for the, you know, for the perks and for the whatever, but it was not a passion-centered thing that they were doing mm-hmm. where the greed would say yes and then now all of a sudden it's Jason the gamer now mm-hmm. you understand that's where I felt like you know what? actually my brother don't have a backbone bro mm-hmm. you know for for the fact that you you honored me at the Goliath comedy club and on GQ magazine and said yo if it wasn't for this nigga mm-hmm. we would not have been the Goliath we would not have started our Wednesday we would have not have known would he stand-up comedy is something you can live by you understand and then who's on more I'm a same Hi, sugar dog. That's why I told him, with yo, my nigga, keep it walking, bro. Yeah. Like, you and I don't owe each other shit. Like, sure. please respect my space. You know? You were in Ganja the other day with the former president, Jacob Zuma. What, yes. what were you doing there? <laughs> so I was doing a very big pro, uh, a production for Paramount. Sure. Um, uh, Paramount and I have had a very good relationship throughout the years. And we're shooting a cooking show. It's called The Heartbeat of Africa. Okay. Uh, so basically with The Heartbeat of Africa with Sandy. Um, Zandi, who is an amazing, beautiful chef from from KZN. What an amazing soul. I loved her because her profile was not too overused. Sure. And she's a she's a woman who is self-inspired, uh, self-funded, and has an amazing husband called Caesar who supports her in everything that she does. And 
I, I met her in Durban and I'm like, you know what, I, I see a television show out of you, mm. you know, but then I see you interviewing the, the, the heartbeat of Africa mm. through food. Sure. So who is the first high profile person we can get to, inter to interview on this show? I'm like, and she's like, no, we can, let's try and ask Baba Zuma. Mm. I'm like, hey, being for real. We did that. We sent the request. We sent everything to, 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 to Baba's uh, team. They responded back and said, oh, tell us more. Ah, uh, was about. I had full access in Chunganda. We went into the presidential suite. Did you swim in the fire pool? No, I oh. didn't. <laughs> I'm disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> we had full access yeah. in Chunganda. We met his daughters. We met the daughters that you don't see on TV. Sure, sure. We met um, Umakumalo. Um, she taught us Kutubabe Exen Utanda Macheu during the day. Urinyama, Epsugus and Peglinyama and Common, and sit in the Nom Silo and Common, a stamp, Namatumbe. You want to, those, you know, the, the interview was, who are you, true fool? Yes, yes. You know what I'm saying? Mm. He is the heartbeat of KZN, and this show was all about going out there and finding who's the heartbeat of Houteng, sure. the heartbeat of Western Cape, you know? Okay, so it's a whole regional. Correct. But then we tried it that it can't be regional. Sure. It has to be African. Oh, yeah. So we changed it to the heartbeat of Africa. Um, so you never know who could be next. When do we get to see it? You get to see it, obviously, this year. Okay. Probably might. Paramount is still going to decide on the publishing and distribution of the show. Okay. Um, we have no idea as to where we're going to be selling it to. By the way, I don't do commissioned content. I do licensed content. Sure, suppose. So the difference is that I am a real executive producer. I find the money to shoot the show and I sell it afterwards. I'm not a commission type nigga anymore. You're, you've, Come on. You've, you've moved on. Yes, I've moved on, yes. Speaking of moving on. Yes. Um, so there's like massive promos for, I think it's to me more like his new show um, about couples and yes. freaking love and stuff. Yeah. But because I saw the promo, mm -hmm. but I also knew that I'd heard you say things might not be kosher between the two of you. What's happening with you and Mommy? Okay, currently right now, Mommy and I are separated. Okay. Mm. We separated and we're in the process of filing for divorce. For real? Yeah. I mean, people grow. Yeah. We grew apart. We went through so many different struggles in our relationship. Mm. I was there for her as much as she was there for me. And the most important thing with this separation is the respect between the two of us. Mm. I, I don't, I'm not doing this for, I'm not going to have a Sumizum Trongo special. Which he, where the one ends and one crap, and then oh my god, oh man, we have to break it up, and then it's a whole special on my divorce. You can't celebrate such things. Why are you speaking like that? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, so easy, sorry, bro. Okay, but good. It's just an example, you know? okay. Um, so uh, it, it really hurts me so much because we have reached a point whereby things are just not. They're not working between the two of us. Mm -hmm. A lot of people out there will be saying, Mo, how can you say such a thing? You guys, you need to stay together for us. I, I, I was going to say, have you guys tried everything under the sun? That yeah. Figure a separation was the next best, best thing. Definitely. Mm. And at the same time... But people are going to say, but she's busy posting stuff about you guys. It's me that's, that, that's walking away, Fresh. Okay. It's me that's walking away. Mm. I am fucking traumatized. Mm. I'm traumatized by black women. You understand me, bruh? Mm. Like, I'm so traumatized to a point whereby I'm mm. so again. And woman is not part of my trauma. Mm. I even said on my interview that even when I was making love to my wife, I would get flashbacks of this woman's face mm. in my picture, mm. in my mind. People who are trying to twist that around, Woody. Well, if if you love your wife so much, why would you be thinking of another woman? Mm. Would you not think about someone who traumatizes you? And trauma doesn't give a fuck what you do. It doesn't give it, a it, shit. It shows up when it shows up. It shows up when it shows up. I was told how to heal. Mm. I was being told how to deal with myself. Mm. But the other the other sex has got the right not to be told mm. what to do with their pain, and they've got the right to tell us their pain ten years later. Or 15 years later and a nigga can go to jail for stupid shit. Mm. You understand? But but is it a black woman thing? I, for is me, she, woman is my third love, bro. Mm. My high school sweetheart, mm. Samantha, loved us so much. We kissed. My first kiss was under a mulberry tree. I broke my virginity at 21. Do you? Yeah. With mulberry st stains all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> 
He felt I, I, that. I'm sure your name was my purple. <laughs> Monge's in my purple's. <laughs> it feels so stupid, right? I put the moon bed. I put the moon bed. She put the moon bed from the lips, like lipstick. Hey, but it tastes so nice. You said, like, guys, oh, it does the most delicious taste. Oh my God, I remember to this day, Samantha, the oh, lips. So, yeah. Mm. And then I fell in love with my baby mama, mm. Mom Smago, and we had a child together, just such a beautiful relationship. And then things didn't work out between the two of us. And I told myself that I don't want to have a child out of wedlock. I was born out of wedlock. True. And my mother was a single mother. She raised me alone. Uh, while my dad was in jail, by the way. My dad was a bank robber. Mm. He robbed a bank that he was working for and spent 13 years in jail. Oh, jeez. Yeah. He, was, he went to jail when I was three months, came out when I was, what, 11 or 12, somewhere there. Was there a stash of cash when he came out? Yes. My mom's name was 10,000 rand. <laughs> what? But 10,000 rand back then was like a million. No, not a million. Then, back then. Maybe 50,000. Maybe 50,000, eh? maybe 50,000 or whatever. I don't know how much the value of South African rand was. But then my mom said it was a lot of money because he bought a car. He went, he dug the money underground. Sure. And he went to go take it out. Um, but, fuck, I don't want to lose my train of thought. Um, when we, we're talking about the separation, I don't want to run away from it. Sure. People need to respect where we at. Mm. There's no blame game here. But if you are walking away, then she won't be happy about that. No, she's not. Mm. She's not. So how are you guys navigating that? We are trying to navigate around that, you know, mm. but it's difficult for me to get through to her at this moment in time. Mm. I've, we literally have, we live in two separate houses. She still stays at the farm mm. and I've moved back to my Sanson house. Jeez. You know, um, the kids are not 100% aware as to what's really going on between mom and dad because we haven't yet really had the time or the chance mm. to have that sit down with all of them and say, listen, Mom and dad are no longer going to be together from here on forth, but we're still here for you. Mm. I need to I need to heal fresh. I really need to heal, man. Mm. I need to heal. I need to heal. I need time by myself, bro. You can't heal within your marriage. No. Mm. No. I can't heal within my marriage. And I, I don't know how to explain it to you mm. or how to justify myself. There's no justification for this thing. Mm. I can't tell you why. But I've been celibate for six months. Mm. And my aim is to stay celibate for 24 months. Mm. You understand? Because that's my cleansing process. For me, mm. I don't want a woman near me. I'm not interested. I'm not, I, I'm not interested anymore. I'm not gay. I'm not saying that I'm, I'm, I, I don't love women. Yo, you, but right now you can be butt naked in front of me. Zero. Mm. I've even trained my mind so much that I don't even get morning glory, dog. Mm. You understand what I'm saying? Neither do I even touch myself or think of anything sexual. Mm. I've only been gunning work. How am I going to come over the trauma? I don't know. Because mm. I can't love again. Mm. It's difficult for me to love now. Mm. It's hard. I can't say that there's a woman that I'll be able to take and say, be mine. Sure. If it is love, if 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 it would be, I just don't want it to be infatuation sure. or a rebound mm. coming out of a 14-year marriage. Or, or blue balls. Or blue balls speaking. Mm. You understand? I really want it to be something. Would say there's a symbiotic relationship between me and this person. Mm. I don't want to live with the woman in my house again. I don't want to have that. Mm. The only people that I'm living for are my kids. Sure. My three beautiful daughters who are here with Kumono but now in your marriage, yes, Mommy pretty much ran everything. Yeah. Including the finances. Yes. So how has moving out affected your pocket? Big time, bro. Because I don't, I don't want her money. Mm. I don't want her money. Mm. You understand? And for me as Umchita, growing up in Logan Jerez, it's hard to be supported by a woman. I am shy, I see pride. I see pride go to her. It gets to a point where by now, yam yam struggles with end up the pele nose and zele pele mash. Sure, sure. You understand? Pele young kinti pele yen school fees in in pele yen. And here I am. I'm tied up. My hands are tied up because of another woman who falsely accused me of rape of something that she knows very well never happened and never will happen. Mm. I see type yam. I'll say the game to that for good. Lerato muloi. I see type yam. 
They must stop forcing that situation on me. Yeah, so what is your type? What makes her not a type? Nyama and a C type yam. And Jolan is in jail. I mean, I'm gonna body, I'm gonna eat, I'm gonna. See, much that we talk with what we love in a woman. She's got nasty feet. I love women with cute feet. That's that's that, and it and does not give me the right now to go and force myself upon a woman that I believe is my type. You don't understand? Hey, it's not it's not you saying if she was your type, you would have. You, I would have done it. You don't understand? It because women like twisting feminists. The feminists, whatever on social media, love twist. I'm not even on social media. I mm. deactivated my Twitter, my Instagram. Momo posts for me when she does. Sure. Momo is Olivia, my PA, by the way. Please mm. don't get it twisted, guys. No? So she posts for me when she can. And what I'm saying now is that if God grants me a second love, it's going to be a Caucasian woman. Or something exotic. So, so you're, you're channeling your inner course now? I'm channeling my inner course. <laughs> Looking for a Mariki. Later, so. Then maybe Mariki, uh, Mariki, how? Then that will end. Yes. So, okay. And you know what I'm saying? That's where I'm at with it right now. Mm. I want to date a snow bunny. I want to be with a woman. I don't want anything to do with a black woman. For me personally, oh guys, I love you guys. When you see me, please hug me, take pictures. But just know what I'm in an interest at all. Because I'm what? I am traumatized. And no one has got the right to tell me how. Do you know I'm on medication right now for life? I'm on Epilim 300 milligrams. Jesus Christ. 300 you see, I'm still hyper and shit. I've taken two of those tablets this morning. It doesn't do shit. But at least it helps me calm down my anxiety. The time when you saw me there, I don't think I was on my medication by that time, Momo, no? I had a mental breakdown. I went delusional when Momo and I separated. For seven days, I didn't sleep. I was admitted to Tembisa Hospital. Momo, come here. Come here quickly. I was admitted to Tembisa Hospital for seven days. I don't have medical aid, fresh. If it wasn't for this woman here, my brother, Caesar Zandi. Momo, please tell Fresh Goody what kind of condition I was in. Sorry, Momo, we didn't want to drag you into... Yeah. No, it was really bad. You can come closer to the mic. Yeah. Um, it was really, really, really bad. Um, Ngashu Goody, he lost his mind mm. and he was like he took over. So yeah, it was bad. In order for us to get him into the hospital, we had to the the, the thingy we had to call the um, the ambulance, and they had to sedate him. Go and get the ambulance. You know, like, it was really bad. It was you know, for me. It was really traumatic. You know, but I'm glad we they even Eugene Koza, Zandi Caesar. Yeah, but it was really bad. So why are you sticking around? You average person who have run away from the. I don't know. I, I just believe in more, you know, I, I believe in more and I know all that he's capable of, you know. Mm. So, yeah. yeah, we met here. Yeah, we met here in 2019. Yeah, so ever since, NJ, I believed in him. Sure. Yeah. Thank you so much. All right. More, more. Thank you for saving my life, Sissy, okay? So, so that's, that's me. That's why right now I'm on Epilim, I'm on sleeping tablets because... I suffered from dementia. Jeez. Yeah. I was delusional. What do you say to someone who says you are walking away from your marriage because you're delusional? Or because you were delusional? Or because I'm mentally... You know what? I'm mentally unstable. Sure. I got a psychologist. I got an occupational therapist. I got a psychiatric what-what. I see those people regularly. And these people are granted to me by... Tembisa Hospital, the hospital that people think that if you go there, from the, hell. They, they think it's the hospital from hell. Mm. It is not. Today, I want to say in front of camera today, I'm an, uh, the nurses, Dr. Mario, um, who else, Momo? Do you still remember all the doctors that helped me? Dr. Mario Noban, who was that Muslim doctor? Don't remember him, but then, because I was in a state, my memory is really bad. That's why I had to ask Momo to come and talk for me on, on that issue, because Ben Neko, Ben said Rosini. At that point in time, those people saved my life. Sure. I'll show you, I'll actually give you a video of myself where I'm strapped down to the hospital bed. Mm. It's not the first time that happened to me. It happened, it's the second time. Mm. In closing. Yes. 
are you okay? Are you going to be okay? It's okay not to be okay. It's okay not to be okay. Mm. And guess what? Through the grace of God, through by Dinubak, Limu Dinuk Mutsepilin, Katse or Keshav. Sure. Keshav. What's next for Tolis Mo? Okay, what's next for me? Quickly, because we need to run. Yo, what's next for me is doing more one man shows. Sure. I'll be, ex I'll be producing a lot of uh, content. Um, not, uh, I'm not an influencer, so I don't do content for Instagram and social media. I'm, I'm a broadcaster. I sure. make content for television. So catch a lot of my shows on Paramount that'll be coming out. Mm -hmm. um, uh, a new cooking show I've got coming out. There's a big interview I've done for Showmax called Uncancelled, which is sure. coming out when Momo in August. Yeah, end of August, towards the end of August. Please, you have to watch that. They invited me for Uncancelled, it's just I was not available. So You are not available. Yeah. Actually, you know what? I think that if they do a second season, you have to go. You definitely have to go. Mm -hmm. Those motherfuckers put me in the same room as Ladies Amar. Sound the Kanye guy, dog. Because Naeshi also has the right to her own story. Because what can say right now? You know what I'm saying? But it's like... I'm, I don't know what it is, Mina Fresh. I dog. I, I'm, I only see greater things for myself. Sure. And I'm going to help a lot of people. You know what I'm saying? And I respect and love my Kobelo Unyonyem Yam, who Isaac Dumele Mukose and his wife. No, I met him. He's an incredible man. Yes. Mm. Till to this day, this man has always been a great spiritual father to me. Sure. You know, so just watch out for that. That's what it is. My man, we need to let you go. Thank you. You've uh, overstayed your welcome. I've overstayed, ne? By four to five minutes. Oh, shit. <laughs> Sorry. And you're late. But yes. listen, my dude, I love you. Thank you so and much. And I'll continue uh, being in your corner, not yeah. just your circle. Me too. And uh, keep building, my dude. Thank keep you. building and just keep, uh, you bob and weave, you throw a punch. Bob, weave, throw a punch. Damn straight. That's how you keep going forward. Can I get a hug? Uh, yeah, man. <laughs> uh, I'm not going to stand up. You can give me a hug uh, in your cool bus uh, shirt. Love you, my dude. <laughs> Maar ek lief, ek lief by jou allemaal, Marikie, jy weet wie jy is, as jy soek om een bykie om te naai, om te pomp, as jy soek my liefde, wacht van my, 24 maande, ek sal terugkom, awee jylle, allemaal, ek lief vir jylle baie. Tot ziens, tot ziens, tot ziens. Tolles Mo has left the building. This is... Wow! What, what a week. What a week. This kid... Yeah! <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> really kicks... <laughs> when looking at the lineup this week, one of our producers remarked that it's a sausage festival. Well, in general, we try not to worry too much about PC-ness as long as people have something interesting to say. So let's get this braai going. First on the grill is our Wow, What a Kid interviewee for the week. Please give a wow welcome to Sipo, Alfie Mkwanazi. <laughs> you are under 35, right? Yes, I am. Okay, cool. Because Wow, What a Kid is uh, African youth under 35. Sure. And sure, he just made sure, it, sure. in case you're wondering why we're calling you a kid. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, just yes. made it. I, I really hope I, I, I maintain that kidness for some time. No, I'm, I'm sure you will. Hey, we're growing, man. Let's talk about adults and braces. Sure. Yes, you've got braces right now. And, yeah. and, and I'm wondering if it's an epidemic because I'm seeing more and more adults, yeah. black adults, sure. with braces. So I'm wondering if it's a trend or just now we can afford them. I think uh, it definitely is a trend. Yeah. Um, I really think it, it, it really is a trend because um, a lot of people are now sort of tapping into the fact that, hey, I need to look good. Yes. You know, I need to fix my teeth. I need to push them in. Yeah, I need to push them and in. And this wasn't working. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, and, and, and the fact that we have fought them now also sure. plays a role. It helps. Because now, yeah, because, yeah. you know, it's just like, ah. Uh, yeah, also. And there are some people who don't need them. I mean, a lot of people said, I don't need them, but I, I had gaps, you know. Also, for when it's more alignment. Yes. Then. You know, yeah. So some people don't need them um, and they serve different purposes. But yeah, we can afford them. We're getting there. <laughs> there are also people who, for instance, get braces in the adult sure. uh, hood that now are sad to get rid of them because they feel, Ish, I'm not going to look cute anymore. Are you one of those people? Or, no. or you can't wait to get rid of them? I can't wait to get rid of my braces because I come from a family of brilliant pearly whites. Hey, but nah. Like my family's got brilliant teeth. So black sheep. So 
literally black, 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 the blackest of the blackest of sheep. Um, and I've always like wanted my, 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 my teeth to look like my family's teeth. Mm. So when I got the chance to get my braces, like, yes, and I can't wait to get them off. Speaking family, so, tell us about your childhood. Where were you born and raised? Yo, I had a brilliant childhood, man. I'm from Davidson in the East Rand. Yes, sir. I uh, grew up in the streets. Mm. Literally, you could not get me out of the streets. I played to my heart's content. I got beaten to my heart's content. Uh, I, and it was all worth it. It was. Let me tell you. Let me tell you. Like, I don't understand why kids now are playing Woody PlayStation and they're sitting at home with their little devices. We were in the streets, Okay. Do you know that school holidays, yeah. they knew they're not going to see me. I'd literally leave by seven. Sure. Because my parents would leave for work at seven. Sure. I leave at seven. Yes. They'll see me when the street lights go on. Exactly. And, and that's be just before they come back. And, and because, no, no, they'll be back already. Okay. But I knew I was going to get a beating. Sure. But I knew it was worth it. Yeah. <laughs> just, so you, you even cho you, you, like you choose your weapon of choice. Yes. It's just like, um, yeah, I'm here with a belt today. Let's yeah. let's try that. Exactly. You know, it was worth it for our immune systems also. But look at the creatives that we are now, and I think that comes from like the engagements that we had in the streets. For sure. The different problem solving skills that we had. Learning to deal with people. Yes. 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 Learning to remember. negotiate with your bully. We once burnt down someone's little shack, dog, in the streets. What? So we like. It was winter. <laughs> it was winter. <laughs> and, um, you know, every house has got like a windy house. They've yes. got like that little windy house at the back where they keep everything. It's like storage, you know. So we had like a fire go go nyana going on and we put it on there. And we used to cook food, you know. So somebody would bring two pieces of chicken nyana. Mm. Someone would bring some. We, we used to hunt for the birds, but oh, yes. thank you guys were higher class. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We just loot from our pros. <laughs> it's just loot, loot, loot. And Whether you bring us some, yeah. we're going to bring a small pen. So, yeah. And then um, we cooked, cooked, cooked. But you know, we're kids, our attention span, man. Yeah. Um, we left that fire, got good wind to go play other things. And when we come back, it was madness. But um, thank goodness it wasn't someone's house. It was just a windy house. Mm. But yeah, my mom literally almost took me to the ER that day because she was just like, how? Yeah. How? So yeah, um, childhood, I come from a mother of two. Mm. Yeah, mother of two, yes. Me and my little sister who we lost in 2021. How old, how old was she when you... She was 24 when she passed. She was 24 when she passed. So my mom had two of us. What, what was her name? Oh, Sam. Sifiso Sami. Sifiso Sami. Yeah, so we'd call her Usam. Mm. Yes, she was my mother's wish. How did that affect the family unit and you personally losing Musami? It's been crazy because um, we're still grieving her. I mean, it's very recent. Um, and, and, and there's a story to that as well that I'm going to share with you. Um, but because we come from such a small family, it was a huge thing for us because, I mean, there's just... This, we're so limited mm -hmm. so to lose and your mom has lost half her kids exactly yeah. so to lose and I mean I mean this this other half man dog I mean <laughs> taking a long you know lost the good half we lost the good half so um, so it, 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 it was crazy for us and it was the first funeral in the family as well so it was just a lot but we managed to to, to cope what is interesting though um, is that I lost my sister a week after I had lost, a week before, a week before I lost um, Dr. Cindy. And that was my first encounter mm. with you through Dr. Cindy Fansale. Mm. So um, she, she always said to me, listen, um, I want you to meet Fresh. Uh, I think he's going to teach you so many things. He's going to teach you so many wonderful Cindy things. Cindy was probably my biggest fan that mm. not many people knew of. So like my biggest fan. On my she, birthday, she's bring be, cake to studio. Yes. Yes. Like at five yes. in the morning, yeah. she'd be there with cake. And I don't understand how she would manage Cindy, that with all of us. Cindy would force her hubby to come to a gig of mine and he'd be there in his laptop yes. working while yes. she's gigging. Yes. I remember you were doing something at the Wanderer Stadium. The Wanderer Stadium. It was so cold that day. And she was like, yeah, we're going there. And yeah. her hubby had to be there. And he was he's a coder. Yes. So he was there coding while we were running around. Hey, I hope he was coding and not hacking into my phone to make sure we're just friends. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, man, Cindy was a gem. Cindy was a gem. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it was, it, it, it was it was good to meet you through her. Assuming heaven exists, sure. What conversations do you think Dr. Cindy and your baby sis are having about you for right now? Um, 
one, Cindy is very proud of me because there are a lot of things that um, I wanted to do, but I was too afraid to do then. Mm. Um, so Cindy is looking at a lot of things that I discussed with her. Sure. And she's just like, you're killing it. So you've gone and d- done them. I've done. I'm checking boxes because yeah. we sat down and we actually drew a list mm. together. And I said, I mm. want to do this. I want to do this. I want to do that. And I'm checking that list as I go along. I know my sister's sitting there and she's just like, brah, how did you manage to be friends with this person? Because mm-hmm. nothing is going on. <laughs> you know, so um, they're having really great conversations. I just hope she's not giving my sister champagne. You know, yeah, Cindy and Bubbly, brah. So I just hope my sister is just doing what she's supposed to be doing in heaven. Mm-hmm. And now she's not like, you know, popping bottles with Cindy because I know for a fact Cindy's popping bottles. I had a dream about her actually. Mm-hmm. Um, and this was maybe three months after her passing. I was like, hey, dude, I miss you so much. She was like, yo, brah, I'm, I'm chilled. And she had a glass of champagne. As always. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure uh, she even has a halo on one finger there. <laughs> She's a wild She's a wild <laughs> How does that much loss, like, what does it do for to you having to deal with so much loss sure. but having to still carry on mm. because you can't stop you can't you absolutely cannot and i think that it it's different for um different people there are people who have to completely stop um because it's necessary and and it's healthy to do so mm. i do advise a stop because you've lost a part of you i do advise that but there are some people who use it to the advantage to propel them into greater things. I mean, um, after my sister passed away, I realized, well, I may not have a lot of time on earth. Uh, I need to do stuff. You know, I've got work to do. So I use my sister's grief to propel me into like really pushing. So now when I do things, I really just, I go to all ends to make sure that I get it because I'm just like, hey, I could just collapse tomorrow and mm. just like... And, oh, and they can't remember me being mediocre today. Exactly. Yeah? Exactly. It's like, and you know... Yeah, he, they must know. He died because he was mediocre all the day. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, they must know. Uh, oh. Now, on your Facebook, you talk about passion, meat, and purpose. Yes. What is your purpose? My purpose... Apart from to make money. Hey, that's a big purpose. And to be the best mm-hmm. MC ever. <laughs> that's a best, that that's a big purpose. I think my purpose is to impact people. My 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 purpose is to allow people to understand that you do not necessarily need to be perfect to touch a life, and you don't need to touch ten thousand lives. But if you can touch one, you've done you've done so much. So basically, your purpose is my purpose. N- you basically hijacked my purpose. No, no, no. You're stealing my purpose. My purpose. But I've been doing it. Okay, so but <laughs> my purpose is bigger. Well, Claire, <laughs> we've been expecting you, Alfie. <laughs> but yeah, I think I, all I do is I always say, Guti, I am Usi for the gift that keeps on giving. Mm. Um, and if I can give you a smile on that day, if I can give you clarity, if I can give you a hug, if I can give you something that you will take home with you to say, it's. Things will be okay. Sure. It's not good now, but things will be okay. Mm. I've done. I've fulfilled my purpose. Your job is done for the day. Sure. Maybe even for, for the year. Exactly. Yeah. So you're 17 and you get your first MC gig at a wedding because someone didn't show up. Sure. What gave you the balls to do it? Because often at that age, you're still trying to find yourself. You're not sure if... Yes. Yes. You know, your average 17-year-old would have not done that. <laughs> so um, I, I grew up as the loudmouth with the small little voice. I had so much to say, you know, and, and, and I think my family spotted that and they really put me into avenues that sharpened that gift. Mm-hmm. So um, every time there was a song that needed to be sung, you know, my grandma would be like, <laughs> and that'd be me. Um, every time there's something that needs to be said in like, you know, a family function, sure. my mom is just like, you know, so um, and also growing up in the church, you know, the church allows you to explore so many gifts and talents and all of that sort of stuff. So when they said, hey, bra, our MC didn't show up. Can you do this? I'd been emceeing other things at church. I was like, wedding. So you're the voice at church. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Wedding. I OK, let's let's go. And you know, I remember I always say this. I remember when I was on stage, it's, it's like something tapped me on the shoulder and said, this is where you belong. You need to use 
every effort you can to ensure that you experience this moment over and over and over. And that's why of all the things that I do, like I could I can draw up strategies for brands. I can do so many videos. But having me on stage, that whatever that thing is comes back and says, Good, you are where you belong. And unfortunately you can't get that if you're not giving a hundred percent. Exactly. You can't. You really can't. Yeah. You can't because even you can tell that I, I, I'm not. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not here. I'm not aligned. Yeah. And when you are aligned, it's it's so crazy. The hearts of people just gravitate towards you. Um, people just appreciate it, and it's so crazy how much money people are willing to part with for you to fully express your gift. And do what you do best. Uh, yes, guys, there's good money in MCing, but you have to be damn good. I don't know. Damn about good. Me. No, no, there's, there's there's good money. Oh, okay. okay, okay, okay. One day you will start making money. <laughs> <laughs> when did you realize that you're becoming an internet star? What was that moment? Was it a phone call you got? Was it the amount of likes, the amount of plays on a certain clip of yours? I was at work. I was at work. So I posted a video. So about, work is where, for those that don't know. So I was at the South African National Parks yes. at, at, at the time. Um, and we, we we had an open plan system at some point, right? Mm. And um, we had a TV, I remember. And um, so a video that I had posted um, over the weekend yeah. had gained so much mileage that it was on the news. Jeez. So somebody was like, ah... Uh, over the news and over the weekend, we had this or what, not, what, not. And this video has been doing so much and encouraging people to lose their weight and all of that stuff. And I'm like, <laughs> wait, <laughs> huh? <laughs> no, man. <laughs> yeah, I don't <laughs> <have> that. <laughs> you know, and this is something I'd posted on WhatsApp. So it wasn't even on TikTok. It uh -huh. wasn't on Instagram. So someone it snitched, out, snitched it out of the... Somebody system. just grabbed it yeah. and put it on TikTok and it just spread like wildfire. And yeah. that's when I knew, um, yeah, okay. Yeah, we're, we're on the internet now. Did that in any way affect work work? Either, either positively or negatively. It was a it, it was a touch and go situation because I think at at work they knew this about me. They mm -hmm. knew that um, you are that guy. This is what I like to do. Um, but there were some instances as the um, brand started growing, as brand Alfie started growing, um, I got pulled to the side having to do other things because now you're doing campaign work. Mm -hmm. Now you have to travel to different places. Now I'm emceeing in different cities and different countries. The Thompson Parks need you at You know, and my boss is just like, yeah, but did you see the lions in our way? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, hey, hold up, I'll be back, you know? So, um, and, and, and I had to sit down with, 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 with my executives and be like, listen, can't we figure out a way to just merge the two? Mm -hmm. And because of the, the organization I was working for, um, we, we we can't always do that for everyone, you know. But I really think there would have been a proper synergy for me to still be able to do what I do and still be able to benefit my organization. I was going to say, yeah. don't you feel they could have better used you? I think so. But also we're governed by policies. I we're mean, governed by regulation, yeah. you know. Um, and I think that they did try. Uh, but we, there was just a little bit of a struggle because things would have taken longer. And I, you know, when when that gift is burning, it's now. It's, it's now. now. It's now. It needs to happen now. Yeah. And also, we don't want to set that precedence to say, okay, Sharp, now that Alfie is mushrooming into this, mm. let's now make him that. You get what I'm saying? Mm. So it, it was important for us to take that into consideration. So I said, no, this is home. Sure. I'll definitely be back. But let me go fly around a bit, yeah. and when I'm done, I'll come back home. I'll Don't stress. Back. Yeah. yeah, tell yeah. the tell the hyenas I'll keep them lucky. Sure. Yes, back. I'll yeah. go back. Yeah, yeah. The first paycheck that you made outside of Sandpark sure. that made you realize that I might not go back to Sandpark. <laughs> let me tell you. Let me tell you because when I left Sandpark, I yeah. had no plan. Sure. I had no reserve. I had not saved anything, and nothing is guaranteed. Nothing is guaranteed. Yeah. Um, and somebody said, hey, listen, we need you on a um, a, a campaign, yeah. but you need to MC it as well. Jesus. You're going to be flown into Cape Town. So it's a double paycheck. Yeah. yeah. You're going to be flown into Cape Town. We need you to create this content on video. Yeah. And we also need you to MC that event. Oh, wow. And um, so I'm thinking, Asha, I'll be flown into Cape Town. It's cool, man. Yeah. I've been to Cape Town. They brought the best Mercedes to come collect me from the airport. 
I went to a pristine hotel. Yeah. I was dressed up. I was proper. And when that when that when that SMS came in, I was like, Yeah, yeah. I'm at the right place. <laughs> I'm at the right place because I was just like, This is so hectic. I it didn't feel like work at all. Mm-hmm. I would earn my salary at sure. at, at Sand Parks. I would mm-hmm. earn my paycheck. You know, I'd know you. Oh, I today would yeah. worked, but that. MC and doing all of the stuff, it didn't feel like work. So for that money to come in, I was just like, "Yeah, let's do more of this." Yeah. You know, yeah. Why didn't I do this when I was a teenager? Yeah, 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 yeah. So um, I, I I really enjoyed that, and it's something that I've always wanted because I wanted it as a teenager. But my mom was just like, "No, I need you in school, buddy. Sure. I need you to focus on this. And make sure that you tick all of those boxes, and only when the time is right, you'll get to do what you want to do." What does she feel about your career right now? My mom is insane. Like, I get exhausted about what I do sometimes. Like, ah, yo, my mom was like, eh, you my mom smush. <laughs> oh, no, that I love. And I mean, at home, you see, cool. but now, like, when she's trying to butter me up, yeah. like, I'll film that And I'm like, no, oh, I'm going to need you to tone it down a bit. <laughs> tone it down a few notches, you know? She's enjoying it. I mean, yeah. she likes it. And I think. One of the things my mom is enjoying the most is the fact that God is answering her prayers because my mom has conversations with God about me. Sure. And conversations like what? She's constantly crying for God to do the most, ma'am. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I I hear her in the morning when when she she's one of those people who are up at three a.m. Sure. talking to God about us. They're both uh, and, just both her and me then. Uh, I'm up at 12 and at three. Hectic. Yeah. Hectic. May I worry? Yeah, you must give me your mom's number. Maybe we can have a cell group. What do you want on cell phone? Mom? No, man, I don't want to be a stepdad. Don't worry. No, I don't trust you with my phone. This thing was just clear. Yeah. Oh, my wife's fresh here. Yeah. Same for injury. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so, yeah. So, my mom is just happy to be getting the answers that she's wanted from God about my life. Mm. Yeah. And it doesn't help that she lost her, her yeah. pop. Yeah, it doesn't. It sure. doesn't. It, 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 it's crazy because, um, you know, she had expectations on both of mm. us. But uh, things happened and, you know, so it is what it is. Sure. Mm. How do you decide that, okay, this I'm going to record and post? And where, is there anything you ever stopped yourself from posting, but you had recorded it? Yeah. So, um, one, I don't record something twice. Okay. So, if, if I record something, yeah, it's yeah, in, in the, the moment. moment. Yeah. If I record it and I, I watch it and I realize, mm, I have to repeat this or I have to change that. That moment it's is dead. It's, it's dead. dead. Yeah. But there are some instances because um, as a blabber mouth and, and you know, we're opinionated. There are some instances where you have to rein yourself back in and be like, ah, 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 that one will get into trouble. So um, I, I, I try to have um, a lot of intuition with what can go out there and what can't go out. And that helps me a lot. That helps me a lot. So there are instances where I'm like, hey, that that one, especially with current affairs, you know, oh, yes. when you want to just take like, you jab at something and you're like ah uh-uh, ah come back okay so you do editorialize yourself I do I have to I have to now more than ever because then it was nice ah he's hilarious yeah. but now it's a okay Everyone you need to be watching. careful about Everyone your opinion exactly yeah. so you, you can't just you can't just yeah that no mm-hmm. that's not gonna fly so there was um, an explosion downtown Joburg uh, in fact downtown Joburg looked like a, an Avengers movie <laughs> I the, saw way, that. the way that road was cracked Hate but it. you know what blew my mind mm-hmm. was how Despite the fact that there's just been an explosion, sure. cars were thrown up in the air yeah. back down, and there's a big ravine, and that it, it, and you could smell gas, and it might explode again. But people are there wanting With to shoot phones. and film, and I'm like, what the fuck are you doing? Exactly. Literally, it's a gas explosion. That means you can't see it, but it's affecting you. Hello. Ah, but... Or oh, there might be another explosion. Uh, but South Africans are Avengers, naturally. Uh, South Africans are content creators. South Africans create content. Because another thing that I failed to understand was there's been an explosion here. Why is this place not cordoned off quickly? It's like we're just, this was, and I think life carried on. It's, I think some of the, like, the resources that we have or the people that need to act in time mm. also just get shot just as us. Like, I just sometimes feel as though we don't have... We do have the proper measures, yeah. but when they need to be 
you know, action. Uh, it's just like, ah, it's not a first alarm. Uh, Papa, I'm not ready. <laughs> <laughs> That's the fire engine of what? <laughs> what? Wait, the fire engine, we have a fire engine? Okay, okay. You know, so it's, it's, it's crazy on all of us. And everyone's just like, ah, you know. Jeez. So um, I think that we're just mm. everyone is shocked. Even the people who are supposed to be there with, you know, uh, everyone's just like, you guys, yeah. tell you what happened, yeah. you know. So I was there. <laughs> I was supposed to be working, so, but so, yeah, let me show you. <laughs> yeah. Because that's another thing about content creation now. Yeah. You could be taking a simple video that will turn into 10 million views overnight. Mm -hmm. And that will change the direction of your life immediately. It does, yeah. So you never know. You never know. Just get that content. No, yeah, that. <laughs> <laughs> Which video of yours is still giving? Who? Um, this is so crazy. I was talking to someone uh, about this that I try to, I, I don't know how it happens, but mm. some of the content that I use or post becomes so timeless. Mm. Last year, we posted a video, no, it was two years ago. Mm. Um, we posted a video of Umam Swongile talking about the cold. Yes. And she's preparing soup and she's doing this and she's doing that. Every time it's cold outside... It's that video resurfaces. Like soup, it shows up. <laughs> it resurfaces. We've got other videos, man, when it starts raining in December. Yeah. Those videos resurface. Mm. Those videos resurface. But the one that is always, always winning mm. is um, my mom talking about taking me to the war in Ukraine. Oh, yes. It's approaching 3 million views on oh, TikTok. Geez. And I don't know. People just can't get over, like... I think when they see that video, everyone sees their mom. Mm -hmm. We all see a strand of our mom. Like, yes. yeah, mm -hmm. I, I, I understand. I understand. When do you start making money from posts? So you need to be tactical and very smart about how you make money from posts. Mm -hmm. Because um, in South Africa, one can't monetize on their content yet. I think you now can. I think you On YouTube recent, you can. Yeah, I'm sure yeah, yeah. I think TikTok, TikTok now you can. Yeah, yeah. recently... Um, uh, put that in place. However, what brands see is your engagement um, and, you know, how your video does, how well your video does. And then they start approaching you about creating branded content. Mm. And it's only then when you are able to decide on a rate and, you know, the sort of content that you're going to post and then a brand will say, no, I'm willing to part with 20,000, 10,000, 5,000, 500,000. Actually, there are people who do that. There are people who coin it that much. No, I can see that scarf. Uh, <laughs> 100,000 rand scarf. Uh, please. So you're not doing bad. So, <laughs> so yeah, that's that's when it starts happening. Yeah. Yes. But yes. also you need to you need to also just give brands a nudge mm. to say, guys, I'm open to doing this. Because some of us, are really good at creating the content, but yes. we can't tra translate branded content into mm. like actual, you know, like mm. a brief into money. Yeah, yeah. into money. Yes, sure. yes, yes. Sure. And then, do do you have a team that you work with? Do you have people that are your sounding boards, or is Alfie a one man show? So I have a team. Um, now my team has about seven people, seven Jeez. individuals, um, and we keep I should growing. Be TikToker, seven <laughs> people. We we keep growing along the way. You yeah. know, we keep growing along the way. Um, I have somebody who looks at our finances. Mm. I have somebody who drives me around and manages my diary and my schedule. I have somebody who um, does our contracts and everything legal. You know, we've got somebody who says, hey, bro, what the hell are you wearing, mm. dog? You know, mm. so um, different people do different things and we've got that group. Most of the time, I try not to have a sounding board when it comes to content that is posted by Alfie. Oh, yes. Branded content, definitely we can have a sounding board on that. Mm -hmm. But the creativity that comes from Alfie, I'm willing to take the shots that come with that. Also because that's what built Exactly, Alfie the exactly. So I try not to have a lot of opinions on that because it is what it is. It they must be authentic. You, they can tell you after you've posted Yes, yeah. they can be like, what the, <laughs> take it down, take it down now. <laughs> you know, but... Um, before it goes out, it, it, it just goes out and it's going to catch all of us by surprise. Whether it trends or it doesn't trend, all of us are just like, ah, sure. it's trending. Oh, okay. Mm. Good. You see, that's why we trusted you, Alfie. <laughs> sure. And all the same people calling you. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Any post that got more negativity than you thought it would or should? Interestingly enough, mm. um, and this is something that I've experienced all my life. And this wasn't a post. This was when I did the 
black carpet at the Metro FM Awards. Yeah. All right. Um, and a lot of people see my videos and they think that the voice is just for the videos. Oh, yeah, it's yeah. a character All for the, the videos. videos. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So when I was actually on live television, people were like, wait, it's actually his voice. Like, how does he have such a huge beard? And we're like, what's going on, guys, you know? So a lot of people were shocked at that. And of course, you know, Twitter trolls will Twitter troll. Yeah. Um, but like uh, people were just caught off guard. Like, oh, it, it actually is his he voice. He does speak like this, that. He talks like <laughs> So yeah, um, but I was just like, ah, it is. It is what sure. it is. And it, it, it comes with, with the territory. I, I'm such a big fan of your work. When we were doing our lineup for O-Ship, um, I was like, uh, my wish list includes <laughs> you. I don't care what it takes. Get Alfie. So, man. Are you looking, are, are you looking forward to Ocean? You, you got me, dog. Yeah. We're going. We're go I am looking forward to Ocean. Um, it's crazy because I am such an ambivert. Mm. So I'm one of those people who will, who will be up and bubbly yes. when I have to do what I have to do. But other than that, I'm literally a tortoise in my little shell. I'm mm. just like, eh, 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 eh. Mm. So Ocean is going to be crazy because you can't even go home. You can go to your cabin. You can't. You can't. It's I, all soap. I love the way you're thinking. It's all soap. <laughs> it's all soap, you know. So I'm really excited. Mm. Um, we're away from home. We're all going to be together. It's just going to be such a vibe. And I've seen the videos of Osha. I've seen what you've done at Osha. I cannot wait. And and the, we're on a bigger ship now because they're bringing, it's, yeah, it's, it's like a bigger ship. So there'll be, normally it's about 2,000 people, 2,500. Sure. Now there'll be 3,500. So it's like being at a mall. But you just don't go home. No, no, not at all. At two government schools. <laughs> <laughs> it's like being at two government schools. For Marcella, hi. But on water. Oh, my word. <laughs> <laughs> With sound. And that great. And, and it's three days and of non-stop parties. Parties, parties. And they're themed and you've yeah. got to. And I'm going to be emceeing one of those. Exactly. Cannot wait. No, Cannot like I said, that's how much of a fan I am. So Cannot wait, bro. I'm glad you'll be joining us. Thank on, you on so much for that. What else are you working on? Where can we catch Alfie next? Uh, listen, Sipo Alfie um, on social, Sipo underscore Alfie, Alfie underscore Sipo. Yeah, mm -hmm. whichever. Yeah. Um, I am working on an incredible event at the end of the year. I want to do a beautiful celebration. It's under Believers Base. We've got something called Believers Base that we do. Okay. Um, And it's going to go live in November sometime. And we're just going to be there. Just saying thank you, yes. you know, for the work we've gotten throughout the year, the people we've met and the people that we've engaged with. So um, you can expect a lot of that. There's a lot of emceeing happening. Mm -hmm. Festive season is taking off crazily. So you're busy. Yeah. A lot of people don't emcee weddings because they believe a wedding should be emceed by someone who knows the bride and sure. the groom. Sure. Um, where do you draw the line in terms of MC work you will or will not do? So um, I am one of those people who are able to make an experience seem as though, like, we go way back with this oh, yes, person. Yes, so yes. when I meet a couple, so I take time out during the week to speak to the couple, and from there I can take the energy. Oh, so you actually work for your money? Yes. You know, I'm just like, <laughs> <laughs> surprise, surprise. How about you just show up at five to the wedding? You know? So like, I'll, I'll just, married? yeah, I'll just get a sense of, okay, stop. This is the energy they, you know, they, yeah, they give yeah, off. And yeah. I try to match that when we, when we meet on stage. Sure. But, um, some of the requests I get, I mean, sometimes I'm asked to do like something at like 2 a.m. in the morning. I'm like, what the hell is going on? What are you doing? You know, that sounds like a cultic what, what, sacrifice. What in the cult is this? Yeah, that sounds yeah. like a cultic sacrifice. You guys want to take my lung. Yeah. So there are just some places. And also just Mina, um, after 10, 11 p.m., yeah. You don't have much of Alfie. Okay, so, like he so, the, so, the, so the battery is... Yeah, he just becomes grumpy yeah. and he's just like he wants to eat and he's always in his tub. I mean, you've seen him. He's always in his tub. So, yeah. Um, but weddings, corporate gigs, got your guy. Mm -hmm. And then um, wedding bells for you or a partner on all ship? Like what's, how's your life looking? We don't know. Uh, listen, uh, somebody tweeted the other day that you're... Temperatures are going to decrease again. And I tweeted, I quoted that tweet and I said, yeah, I guess my value is also going to decrease because I can't, I can't keep this up. <laughs> no, I, I, I know my worth. I know my worth. I know my worth. Uh, when the time is right. What, does, I, what like, does that even mean? I don't know. I just, I'm struggling to find. What are you looking for? I don't know what I'm looking for. I actually don't want to talk about it because every time there's just like, how are you looking? Like, how are you looking? You don't know what you're looking for. So I'm just like, I, 
I, I I literally just put my head in 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 a hole like an ostrich when it comes to that. I even turned red in the face. I was like, no, I don't, I don't, I don't know. So when last were you dating? Hey, um, two years ago. Yeah, two. It's been two years. It's been two. It's been two. Two years, no dating, or two years celibate. It's been. There's two a difference, years. pale. It's been two years celibate. Two years. I. <laughs> You're lying. <laughs> As he sips his coffee. <laughs> it's just been a really good two years. <laughs> hey, let's move on. Let's move on. <laughs> oh, man. Alfie, I love your work, my dude. Thank you so One much. One of your millions of fans across the world. And uh, we'll continue shouting your name from tall buildings and even in rooms you're not in. Thank you so uh, much. Because you kick ass. Thank you so much. But most importantly, we'll see you on O Ship. And we're looking forward to three days sure. on water. With a very single, very celibate, <laughs> with blue balls, clearly, Alfie in Kwanaz. I have one question for you, though, before yes, we sir. go. What not can celibate. I expect? Oh. What can I expect at Ocean? What can I expect? It's a three-day party experience, a lot of music, a lot of people drinking. Yeah. Because you're Alfie, you'll be um, hounded for autographs and pictures. But we'll have security for you. Oh. So if you want to take pictures, you can do that. Uh, yeah, I don't need security. No, no, you will. Those are Trust my people. Oh. No, 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 no. <laughs> Three and a half thousand people drinking. Okay. Stop being your All right. Oh, so, yeah, very quickly. But most importantly, on the first day, pace yourself. Okay. Half the DJs we've had over the last 10 plus years sure. miss the set on the first night. <laughs> because that's how wild. Because they drink a lot. So just pace yourself. Pace yourself and you'll be fine. Okay, cool. Yeah. Let's do this. Let's we'll see you on our ship. And thank you for having me, Fish. Ladies and gentlemen, Alfie, Mr. Celibate for two years. <laughs> Although we know he's lying. Kwanazi. <laughs> We're out of here, man. Um, in fact, we leave you on a sad note. Well-known SATV series, Sierra Dilan, is coming to an end. Legend Derek Watts is leaving carte blanche. Some would say that these two things are more indicators of the end of the world. Some would say it's more reminders that the only constant thing is change. Hope you can embrace the changes that happen anytime soon. In the meantime, wishing you all a wow week ahead. Have a great week in spite of yourselves. Shout out to our guests. Um, our guests uh, today, we had uh, Tolasmo and uh, Alfie Mkwanazi. Um, Am Studios for hosting us. Uh, Africa Podcast Network for being our family. Uh, shout out to our cinematographers, uh, Pezulu Works, uh, to our audio uh, engineer, Otis the Flo Fraser, and of course, creative director, Kuvesh Mohan, and show producer, Kilesumudisa King. Email us at waw at africapodcastnetwork.com. <laughs>